This is Twit. Everybody needs a tuner. Well, let me take that back. A lot of people need tuners. Uh, they allow you to operate uh, different antennas with a little more bandwidth than you'd get with the antenna itself. Of course, a resident antenna is always best, but it's not always possible. So here's a little tuner kit that uh, I took a look at and uh, built back in 2013. It's a fun project. It's inexpensive. If you haven't built anything before, you're getting into HF, this would be a perfect first project for you. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to begin building an HF antenna tuner. It's the MFJ VersaTuner 2 model MFJ 941 EK. The first thing we need to do is go over the parts inventory, check them off here as we go, and make sure that we've got all the parts here necessary to put this kit together. Now I've sorted all my parts and checked them off on the checklist. It's time to move on to the first stage. We've got five resistors to install first. Now I'll solder all these. We'll clip off all the leads. So now we've got four 50k ohm trimmer pots and we're going to install those as our five, six, seven, and eight. Now we've got four ceramic disc capacitors to install. Now we'll find C4, which is a trimmer capacitor. Now let's solder all these in place before we move on. And now we'll use the 680 microhenry choke, which looks like a resistor, except in this kit the body is green. And now we'll find the two Schottky diodes. In my kit, they're both blue. They're the only two diodes in the kit. And we got to identify the cathode end. That's the end here that's got the black band on it. And we'll install D1 and D2 in the board, making sure that we've got the cathode in the direction of the arrow. Next, we're going to install some switches and the power jack. First, we'll install the double pole, double throw push button switch, which has six pins on it here. That will go into the switch one position. And the other one, which is a four pole double throw, has 12 pins. That will be switch two. And we'll do the power jack as well. Now we've got the final switch to install. And this is an eight pole double throw rotary switch. Now the next instructions call for finding six pre-stripped five inch lengths of jacketed hookup wire. That means with insulation on them. Now how am I gonna hold these three wires in while I solder them? I think I'll just put a little piece of tape on there and see if that works. Now we install the red wire at the position marked LMP behind S1. And the violet wire will go into the one named FMTR and the white wire will go into RMTR. Now let's see if we can hold the wire and the solder with one hand and the soldering iron with the other. Now we're going to install T2, which will be the SWR transformer. We'll use this little brass eyelet here, put it through the T2 position and solder it to the board. Then we'll take one of the lengths of bus wire here, put it through there. Now we'll take T2 in this position. This is a smaller toroid in the kit. One wire is red here, the other is more of an amber color, and then the two in the center here are twisted together. So what we're going to want to do is put those into the three holes here in that order after we've slid this down over the uh, wire and the eyelet. Now once we've got that in position, we'll take the little nylon washer and slide down over the top. And we'll hope it stays there. Now we'll find six additional bus wires here. And we'll install them at positions DL, wire, coax 2, coax 1, and C2. Now on the wire on the inside at position DL here, that one needs to loop through up to the switch. Now 
Now this completes the PC board part of the kit here. There are some positions here that aren't used because this same PC board is used in a number of different model tuners. Now our next step here is to mount the printed circuit board inside of the chassis. It'll go like this. Now the next step will be to mount the coax connectors in the rear here. And the connectors mount from the inside. Now we need to route these bus wires to the back of the connectors. We'll take the one that says coax 1 and that will run to connector coax 1 here. The one that says coax 2 goes to the coax 2 connector. The connector that says transmitter has the one labeled as T2, this one right here. And then the last one labeled dummy load is the wire labeled dummy load right here. And now we'll solder all of these in place. Let's install the ground post, which is going to go down here. Now we'll install the two uh, banana terminals here. Actually, there's three of them. Now the one labeled wire here, we're going to take the lead here that's marked wire and connect it to there. And I'm going to try to come under this one right here. Make sure those don't touch. And now for the balance line, we're going to install our larger ballon here. And now the two leads that are twisted together here, those will go to our ground terminal on the bottom. And now we've got a white lead and a black lead left. Those will go to the two balance posts here. And now it's time to mount our meter. And now we'll take the capacitors and put them across the terminals of each of the meter movements here. And we'll also put one across the lamp assembly. Now we'll install one of the black wires to each negative terminal of the meter. We'll also install a black wire to one of the meter lamp terminals. Now we'll connect the violet wire to the positive lead of the forward power meter. You see forwards on this side, but the movement is actually down here on this side. The white wire goes to the positive terminal over here on the reflected movement. And the red wire here will go to the opposite side of the lamp. The red zone is for immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. There is no stopping in the white zone. The red zone is for passengers only. This completes the RF switching and metering sections of the kit. Next week we'll return and build the T network. If you'd like to build along with us, visit MFJEnterprises.com and order MFJ 941 EK. And that is a fun, uh, simple little effective tuner. I ended up giving that one to my son. He uh, became a ham just so shortly after the time I built that, I guess. And he's put it to use out in Houston, Texas. So uh, great for, you know, 300 watts or less, which, of course, um, practically all HF radios are. Uh, the MFJ 941 EK. And, you know, they kind of put that together special for us because I had asked uh, Richard at MFJ to help us get some kits together. That is one of them there. Another is a four-to-one ballon kit that they um, produced at uh, our request. So go check that out. Um, we'll be back next week. I'm going to uh, finish building it and um, see see what we do next. And then after that, we're going to test it out. And it's some interesting uh, tips on how you test that, how you set it up.